Yes, hello. Uh, welcome to today's video. My name is Joel, and I'll be talking about VAT. As you can see my slide, it's the basic tax policy and compliance training, basically emphasizing VAT in Uganda. Uh, the presentation for today will be considering the VAT overview, the taxable and uh, exempt supplies, the tax point, value for VAT purposes, the VAT computation. I'll also hint on the um, the computation for the VAT withheld as per the new amendment, which was reinforced though it was introduced earlier last year, but reinforced effective 1st of December. Um, then we, we look at the invoices, the tax invoices, now what we call the IFRIS, as generally accepted by or introduced by URA, and the key audit issues concerning VAT, plus the refunds of tax in case you have a, in case you have an amount above five million. So I'll start with a VAT overview. Uh, definition of VAT, VAT is an indirect tax that is imposed on value added, added at different stages of production. Indirect in the way that the final consumer bears the tax burden. Uh, the scope of VAT, VAT is charged on every taxable supply made by a taxable person. Every import of goods other than an exempt import and the supply of imported services other than exempt supplies. You know, we have various, we have two types of taxable supplies. That is the standard rated and the zero rated at a zero percent rate, basically for things like the exports. Persons liable to pay tax. Uh, in the case of taxable supply, it is to be paid by a taxable person making the supply. In case of an import of goods, it is to be paid by the importer. So those are some of the persons liable to pay tax. Um, taxable person. What do they mean by a taxable person? Uh, basically, I'm giving you a brief overview before I take you to the... Uh, actually, I didn't talk about it. We'll also be looking at the return. A quick review of what is a VAT return that you have to file to URA by 15th of the next month. A uh, taxable person, a person registered under Section 7, is a taxable person from the time of registration. Meaning, if you register by 18th of January 2022 for VAT with URA, meaning you be you qualify to be a taxable person from the date you register for VAT. Uh, this 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 template will be available. Uh, the, the link will be shared below. In case you're interested to look at it more in detail, I'll share it with you. Uh, we also have VAT registration. Uh, who is who qualifies to be registered? And we have two types of VAT registration. We have the compulsory registration and the voluntary registration. Um, compulsory that is when you already you're dealing in taxable supplies and Within one quarter, you are making a threshold of 37.5 million, which meets the requirement for you to be registered. And annually, over and annually, you're making sales or your turnover is worth 150 million. Voluntarily, uh, this is where a person who is not required to register for VAT on account of having business activities below the threshold applies for VAT registration. So you can. This template will be available, as I said, for you to read more and have an understanding of the details of more of who is, what is voluntary and what is compulsory. So uh, as I've told you earlier, we have two kinds of taxable supplies. I mean, we have two kinds of supplies. We have the taxable supplies, which includes the zero rated and the standard rated and then the exempt supplies. Uh, generally, supply of goods is defined as a transactional arrangement where the owner of parts with possession of goods Includes an agreement of sale or purchase and lease of the property. Supply of service means supply which is not a supply of good or money. Uh, this is kind of an hierarchy of how the supplies are broken down. Now we say the taxable supplies include the standard rated at 18%, zero rated at 0%, and then the exempt. 
as per as per the schedules in the VAT Act. Standard rate that means the taxable and zero rated supplies. A taxable supply is a supply of goods or services other than exempt supply made in Uganda by a taxable person for consideration as part of his or her business activity. A zero rated, as we said, is a zero percent. That is the rate, and basically it applies to in case you're making sales outside Uganda. Exempt supplies, as this is a supply of goods and services for which no VAT is charged. Therefore, for supply of exempt, supply, uh, exempt supplies, are by the law not required to charge VAT on these supplies. An exempt supply is one listed in the second schedule of the VAT Act. If you download online, is, is, the VAT Act is available online, you will see that schedule, the second schedule, listing some of the exempt supplies. Uh, because you have to also keep on, you can follow this page, you can follow our YouTube channel, we will be updating you on the various changes in the VAT Act that happen, because uh, it is not static, they keep on modifying it. So those are some of the exempt supplies, solar panels. I'll jump out of some of the, I'll jump some of the slides, but the, 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 the file will be available down in the link for your consumption in case you're interested. Uh, this is talking about the tax point for VAT. The tax point is the time when the VAT should be charged. Actually, this is kind of this uh, kind of an issue in small businesses where uh, they ask a question, when should we charge VAT? So this answers that question. I've been having that question on our, on my website of Philip Consults, Uganda Limited, asking when should one charge VAT or when is one liable to pay VAT. Uh, the third point is is the earlier of the date on which the goods are delivered or made available or performance of a service is completed. Payment for goods or services is made. A tax invoice or an IFRIS invoice is issued. This is a very key point because some of the, the, the taxpayers who are in construction tend to treat uh, this mode of VAT when they are paid, not when they raise the invoice or when they, they offer the service. So this is a key point. For basically, for in construction, you need to be careful here. You, uh, most of the companies are trading on accrual basis, not on cash basis. So it depends on your model of trading. But as per Uganda, most of the limited companies, and they stated oh, in writing to the Commissioner General, the URA Commissioner General, asking for approval for you to deal in cash basis. But most of the businesses are on accrual basis. Where transactions happen as and when, not as and when the payments are made. Taxable value for overt purposes. I'll skip all this, but the file will be available for you to read. Just make the video short. Talking about one of the interesting topics that is the input credit. Input credit, as we'll be looking at the VAT return, monthly return. Uh, input credit, this is the this is the uh, the tax when you make purchases or when you make purchases from different suppliers you're buying the good and you're also obtaining input tax credit which you can claim back from the the uganda revenue authority input credit a credit is allowed to a taxable person incurred on purchases expenses imports Imports, when you make also imports, you bring in things into the country, for example, materials, and you pay VAT on them. That's what they mean by the imports. While making taxable supplies, the entitlement to claim input VAT is subject to the following condition. The taxpayer must be a taxable person. One, you must be a taxable person that is with a validity registered for VAT. 
The tax pay, the purchases and expenses or import is for use in business of a taxable person. The goods imported must be for use in the business of the taxable person or in the company that they are meant to be used for. Uh, this is a continuation. I'll jump some of that, but that's basically about input VAT. We shall also talk about uh, the apportionment of input VAT. This is the most interesting part whereby most people don't focus on it, but it's so critical. When do we apply the apportionment of input VAT? Uh, credit is allowed to a taxable person in card on purchases, expenses, and imports while making taxable supplies. Therefore, a taxable person dealing in both taxable and exempt supplies is required to apportion. I'll repeat this. Therefore, a taxable person dealing in both taxable and exempt supplies is required to apportion. In case you find that you're not dealing in in case you find out that you're not dealing in both in both taxable and exempt supplies, then you, you, you need to apply the apportionment of the input VAT. Input VAT, I would say this is the credit that you attain upon, upon making purchases or expenses or imports. So you should take keen interest in this. Whenever you have both taxable and exempt supplies or sales, you have to apportion your input. This is to ensure that the taxable person only is only entitled to claim input VAT apportionate to his taxable supplies. The fact that exempt supplies are not taxable, the costs incurred in producing the or in making the exempt supplies, URIA ensures that he only claim the input VAT that leads to the other part of the tax table, but the exam supplies have to be apportioned. And how do you do this? One will ask, how do I apportion this? There is a formula that is applicable, and uh, for us to apportion, we have two methods. Most times, I'll just drift to my return a bit to show you where this applies. We have three methods of apportionment. The normal method, the sum method or the standard alternative method of apportionment and any other method proposed by the commissioner. For example, where does this apply? For example, in the solar industry, uh, a different method is applied as advised by the commissioner general of URIA and uh, USEA, that is the, the, the body governing the solar companies. But where do we do the apportionment? Um, I'll open up my return here. I have my return. And if you look at the return, section A to F, if you move your cursor just below, uh, for example, let's say under our cells, we have exempt cells. Let's make these cells exempt. Let the macros run. Because we said, whenever you have the standard rated cells and exempt cells, the costs you incurred in producing these exempt cells will lead to apportionment. So, when we put the exempt cells there and we have the standard rated cells here, automatically that this Input tax credit allowed will open up, and there's a down drop cursor where you select the method you're using. You can select any method depending on the nature of business, but most times, as we see, normal or default method is recommended for starters. And when you select it, uh, if you look at your input VAT, is 2673. One would ask, why is this figure still the same? When 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 is the when is when is the input tax credit affected? When you look at the standard rated sales, they are 14 billion, and uh, exempt local sales are 50, 560 million. Let's assume to set the effect. Let's assume the exempt sales are more than 90 percent of the standard rated sales, and let me say. 
this is 600 million this is just we don't mind the numbers we're just trying to look at your concept if this is 600 million for the standard rate cells with VAT of 108 million the exempt local cells are 560 you will see that our total input still remains 2.6 billion but when you come down to apportionment you see that only 1.3 billion is allowed out of the 2.6 billion the template helps you to calculate this but with time i'll be showing you what happens behind the what is the formula how do you come up with this figure i'll be sharing with you uh, uh, i'll be sharing with you that in our next video on how to compute the input tax credit allowed okay let's go back so uh that's how you apply the apportionment of the input tax credit the return will help you to compute it as long as you feed in the right information for the standard rated cells and the exempt cells when you proceed uh, these are just the methods you can still read more about it to see how it works out but if you look at the normal method it's just saying that a times b over c where a is the total input tax this is the total input tax for this case we had uh we had uh, 2.6 billion and then b is the total taxable sales in the period and for this case the total taxable sales we have 600 million and then c is the total sales by total sales they mean both taxable and exempt sales meaning in this case the total taxable sales will be 560 million plus 600 plus 600 million add the two for you to get the total sales but we'll go into details of that when we come to the return on an example practical example for you to see what really happens but still uh, in this in this in this presentation i have a small example you can look at and see make sense out of it as you can see they say uh, that is the formula there they are saying the rule is where the fraction b to c is less than five percent the taxable person is not allowed any input where b to c meaning b we say b is the total taxable sales and c are the total sales so they're saying where the fraction b over c is less than five percent the taxable person is not allowed to claim any input meaning you won't claim anything of the 2.6 billion for example like that example we looked at and where the fraction of b to c is more than 95 percent the taxable person is allowed to claim the entire input so this is the rule you have to follow for you to apply on the apportionment using the normal method and the simple example is given here where we talk about the standard rated cells of 150 million we talk about the exempt cells of 850 million and then we talk about the zero rated cells of 50 million input tax input input vat in card is 22 million so they are saying input vat claimable will be computed as follows we have standard rated of 150 million exempt of 850 zero rated of 50 and and uh, in, in card v, input vat is 22 million. actually this is the best example for you to understand this concept in a small in a small and easy way and this example is for SN, S, snl which deals in both taxable and exempt supplies and this is the answer we said a which is the input vat times b which is the taxable remember taxable includes the standard rated and the zero rated over c which is the total sales and total sales it considers all of them our input vat in this example is 22.5 million b our taxable sales include 150 million plus which is the standard rated sales plus the zero rated sales 50 million those two make up the standard the taxable sales exempt sales are not taxable sales you should note that so taxable sales is standard rated sales plus the zero rated zero rated sales which makes 200 million 
over C, which is the total sales. And total sales would be 850 million plus 50 million plus 150 million, giving us 4 million 285,714. Meaning, out of 22 million 500,000, only 400 and 4 million 285 would be allowed as input tax. Most of you people don't compute this. Uh, I don't know, maybe due to, to limited knowledge about it, but this is critical. You have to consider it because when you go into a, a, a VAT audit, these are some of the things you will bring out and will bust you completely. So, you better look out. In case of any questions on this, please don't hesitate to, to comment below to the video and uh, I'll ask some of your questions. I'll also share my email address. You can ask directly anything concerning VAT. So, let's continue. Uh, this is the standard, the standard which is called the SUM method or the standard alternative method of apportionment. Uh, this method all allow all input that is directly attributed to taxable sales, and this allow all input that's not attributed. This you kind of do it manually. You know that this percentage is a, is attributed to the sales which are taxable, and this is not attributed. So by default, you are portion. But we'll go into details of that in our next video. But still, this will be available. Uh, this template we didn't, I didn't modify it. I didn't modify it so much, but this could be how do you tell a valid tax invoice? It's now how do you tell a valid IFRS invoice? There is a portal on your page where you can validate the IFRS. We also have it. We'll have a day to discuss about IFRS in detail. How to do the credit notes? How to do the stock management? How to add items? Uh, those are credit. What is now happening on the credit notes? There's a, there's a recent update that you have to. Filling forms, uh, take them, submit them to URA, attaching the various proof of why you're uh, cancelling the invoice. Yeah, we'll have a day for that, but for now, we won't talk much about that. Uh, these are some of the key audit issues. As we were discussing, I was talking about them the unaccounted for VAT on miscellaneous income, reconciliation uh of sales as per vat return to the turnovers per account those two have to be matching you have to look out for them actually what you file in your vat must match with what you call your turnover in your books of accounts at the end of the year uh you have also to be keen on erroneous like claimed vat input in case you have any you have to amend before assessments are raised uh the late filing of returns you have to make sure by 15th of the next month by end of the month Let's say December, you have to ensure that by 15th of January, you file the returns to avoid penalties for late filing. Yeah, among other things that you have to look out for. Yeah, so those are some of the things you have to look out for. VAT, basically, this was a brief overview about VAT. Uh, thanks. Thanks to you all for listening to this video. Please like the video, subscribe, share to your friends. Let's have the video to move around. Let's share the knowledge. In case of any questions, don't hesitate to contact us down. Comment below. Thank you.